give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praises. We lift up your name, O Lord, for you are good and your goodness overflows within us. Your goodness overflows all around us. Your goodness is all we know right now. We thank you for the lives that you've given us. No matter how short it is, Lord, we know that we have everlasting life. We know that we have your promises to hold on to. And it is a yes and an amen in Christ. Father, we just pray, oh Lord, for the Gamboas. We pray for comfort and peace at this time. We pray, Father, for just your counselor to embrace them. Let Holy Spirit be their strength. Let Holy Spirit be their advocate. Let Holy Spirit be their comforter at this time. And we pray. Holy Spirit, for your presence to just envelope them. Envelope each and every one of us and give us revelation knowledge to flow in us. And I pray that you empower Nick with your words, O oh Lord. I pray for your anointing to flow and let the power of your seed be absorbed by our hearts. Let, let it be planted in good soil. Open our hearts that we may receive your word with joy and gladness. We praise you, Father, and we ask that you give Gab a big hug for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen to that. Okay, so I'm up for the evening. And... Um... I'm going to share screen for the first time. And you know that I hate, um, or I don't, not good with making slides, so pardon the simplicity. Okay lang yan, kasi simplicity in Christ nga naman daw. Um, hold on. I'm not even sure if I know how to do this. Is it sharing? You see it? Okay, now. I'm going to okay, toggle this. Okay. <clears throat> So this is the topic, proper use of God's law. Wait, I'm going to put this here. I'm gonna put this here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm adjusting my screen there. Yeah, okay. The proper use of God's law. Any one of you um, ever had a case? Ever won, lost, ever had a dispute? In the barangay, nagreklamo, something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look for like reactions from you guys. Doesn't seem like meron. Okay, I'm the only one. Oh man, instead so. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Okay, so we know that that the system here is flawed. We know that. We know that minsan ni red tape. Di pa minsan eh, but <laughs> red tape is just like rampant, right? Here in here, here in our country. Uh, and, and, you know, there's also corruption. So, but, but picture this. What's, what's worse than, than a corrupt system? There's actually something that accuses us day and night. The accuser of the brethren in Revelation 12.10. And this guy will be will be non-stop, okay? What if the accuser that constantly bombards you with accusations of your sin, what's worse than that is actually talagang ginawa mo. You know, like, oh, Nick, ito yung ginawa niyan dati. This guy is um, an arsonist. This guy disobeyed his parents. This guy cursed his parents. This guy picks fights. This guy, like, just constantly. How are you going to go about it? Picture if you were really in a, in a courtroom. 
Diba? Your, your next defense is either you plead guilty or you plead innocent because someone is accusing you. The other party is accusing you. Now, ignorance of the law excuses no one. It doesn't. So, nakita nyo na yung topic. And it's, it's, it's not a secret. We, we've, we've shared this with you guys that we're taking up discipleship evangelism. I, I believe that it's a good platform. It's a good intro. Each and every topic that we cover, you can actually expound it to, to an entire series alone. So ito, this is, this is pretty much like a highlight of, of what the, the person sharing, whatever it is that the Holy Spirit has impressed upon me, these are some of the highlights of, of, you know, uh, about this topic. Proper use of God's law. So sabi niya, okay, law. Let's look up law, right? So law in, in the Greek is nomos. And it occurs 197 times in 158 verses. 75 times of which is in Romans. Galatians 32. The rest, yeah, it's, it's, it's there, the word nomos. So okay, I'm, I told myself, hey, let's focus on, on, I'll share more on Romans. I'll share maybe some on, on Galatians. But when you say law, when someone says law, immediately what, what pops up in your head? In a biblical context, ambilis. People are, are, are easily going to say, it's a Ten Commandments. It's a, it's a Ten Commandments. Ama? When we say that Moses is law, they refer to Ten Commandments. But hey, is it, is it really just about the Ten Commandments? Or are there more laws to it? How many laws? 613. I could be wrong, pero parang alam ko 613 laws of Moses. So again, I place there, ignorance of the law excuses no one. And I don't know if you're like me, I examined the entire, just on the Ten Commandments alone. Yan lang. Shall not have other gods before me, graven image, um, take the name of the Lord in vain, I used it as a cuss word. So, so committed that. One, two, three, four. I'm notorious for Sabbath. Five, na share ko na sa inyo. Thou shalt not kill. Pwedeng sabihin ko, I didn't really kill except for Secho. Secho is a killer. Sorry, sorry. Bro. No condemnation in Christ. But like, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Thou shalt not steal. Malabu yan. I committed that also. Bear false witness to your neighbor. Yes, also. Covet also. I'm like, wala akong nilagpa. Lahat dinaanan ko. Ah. I, I committed just on the 10 commandments alone, I've sinned on all 10. Right? And, and if a person goes, hey, you know, I, I didn't kill. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't commit idolatry. I knew who God was. Kilala ko naman si God. Not according to this verse that I wrote down there, that Colossians 3 verse 5 says, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness alone is a form of idolatry. And if a person decides on, yeah, but I didn't kill, I didn't, I didn't have adultery, and I didn't have adultery based on the court's um, standards, right? I'm not saying that because cats beside me. <laughs> I really have not committed adul uh, adultery as far as human standards. What about Jesus' standard? What about these? Diba? What, about, what about his standard for anger, for divorce, for oaths, for retaliation, and, and for us? when he commanded us to love our enemies. Right? So, the courts. Since we, we, we talked about the law, it's, it's fast to, to pick up on, hey, what else describes the law? What else describes the judge? And hey, wait, Jesus talked about the unrighteous judge. And I'm quite sure some of you here, because you also follow the other, our ministry partners, the Setra's part of that also, 
that you know that the title is somewhat inaccurate. We, we pick up on this parable and immediately we, we account this for pray unceasingly. Kulitin natin, pester natin si God. But very few would highlight or pick up on it's not the widow that Jesus was referring to. Um, since, okay, I'll, I'll use, Jan, can you read the, the parable? Hanggang verse 8 lang naman. <clears throat> okay, sure. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said in a respect, he said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while, he refused. But afterward, he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to, to his elect? who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to, to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Thanks, Jan. So, you see this. This is a parable. Jesus highlighted whom? The widow? Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice? To his elect, who cry to him day and night, will he delay long over them? It's not much about our, our persistency with our prayers, that God is a just God. So when we, when we speak about just God, this also implies to, um, to when, when, we, when we discuss, when we debate with with. Some of the unbelievers na parang, Oh, grabe kayo. Ang ibig mong sabihin, kahit gaano kang kabait and this and that, dahil wala kaming Jesus, di kami naniniwala dyan. Dapat kami sa hell? What's the answer to that? Like, my real answer to that is I have to trust with God that my God is just. That He's not gonna be fooling around with something that is eternal. That He gave all the means. Unfortunately, it is also us who rejected it. We have free will. And when we, ha we have to know that when we pray also, we have to pray in faith that our God is a just God because without faith, it is impossible to, to please Him. We have to also believe that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't show favoritism. Those are just a couple of verses that I highlighted there. As I've mentioned, like, you know, Romans will be one of them. It's going to be no respecter of person. So one cannot, cannot say, oh, bakit si ganto hinil ni God? Bakit si ganto na prosper ni God? Well, guess what? If you're going to talk about prosperity, the wicked prospers. Right? But we've also established uh, 2 Peter 3.9 that he is not slow with his justice. He gives everyone a chance to what? To repent. So they won't be destroyed. Now, you want to you wanna take on the law? You want to you wanna justify your own righteousness? Because these verses will, will go up against you very, very easily. And it's, it's plain as day. That for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. And for all who rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of law and do them. As, as, as Christians, as believers, we know this. We've, we've heard this several times. So again, the topic is about how to use uh, the proper use of God's law. So now, huh, let's not be quick to use verses like these 
and continue to live in sin as well. Because scripture tells us that faith without works is dead. And yung, yung, yung chapter yun, that's, in, uh, that's in James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. Oh, there, I've written that also. Okay, so faith without works is dead. Right? Um, you guys can look up the, the, the verse there. Another law. How about this? Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. It sounds like a spiritual law. And this is why we, we, we don't deny Jesus. And it's, it's really not hard because out of the abundance of one's heart, the mouth speaks. And that is also why we follow what he does, which is he commanded us, he goes, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely you give. So the, the, the faith without works would also look like this. Um, I think the most popular disease lurking around, roaming around, obviously, is, is COVID. Right? And yes, we do have, if you understand what faith is about, how would your faith lead you to work? How does one supposed to respond to affliction? I've had that, and I, I, I shared with you guys, I'm not going to lie. That, that thing scared me for a time being. And my number one scare, and I told this to Kat because a lot of people assumed that I was afraid to die. The sad part is I, I wasn't afraid to die. What I was afraid of is FOMO, as in fear of missing out, as pathetic as that sounds. Because like, because like, and then you're in isolation. And I'm like, I have a son. And usually at this, this stage, they grow up so fast. So it's a, it's a FOMO that like, like made me so anxious. My blood pressure shot up and, you know, whatever garbage that, that, that sickness uh, came with. So in faith, and, and dito naman, pinagalitan naman ako ng mga, ng mga relatives ko because I did the, Oh, sabi nila, Nick, do breathing exercises, which I did. And then I, while I was doing my breathing exercises, I was lifting weights as well. And then they nila, sabi nila, you're supposed to rest and this and that. Like, okay, which, which part should I like say, but I have faith to do this. And at the same time, everything that's supposed to monitor my well-being is saying, rest it out that quote-unquote science says, do this, do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a, a small portion of this because you've, you've heard this. A kid that we were ministering to um, went home with the, with the Lord. And when, when, when you have cancer, and this, is, this is not the steps. This is where... This is where this is how one's supposed to fight. If you want to talk about loss, it's going to look like this. This is not steps, but at the very least, I'll offer two. If someone approaches me and goes, bro, I have someone that I know who has, who's battling cancer, who's battling COVID, who's battling whatever, insert whatever disease, whatever affliction, whether it's poverty, whether it's depression, I'll offer two things only. One, it's not from God. It's either from the enemy or a consequence of your sin or the brokenness of this world. It's not going to come from God. My number two advice would be resist. 
plain and simple. And then we fight. Because if our conversation will, will revolve around but Job, but thorn in the flesh, but this and that, I'll be like, read your Bible. These are the verses. I'll help you out. If you're still not going to listen, I'm not going to waste my time. Because, again, the harvest is plenty. The workers are few. I, I, I can't possibly um, engage further than that if a, if a person that you're ministering to or if, if a person that I'm ministering to refuses to receive the truth. Because Hebrews 10 verse 12 to 14 says, uh, Kuya Alex, you want to read this? <clears throat> but when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. May, may kulang pa bang ginawa si Jesus Christ? Meron pa bang, is it not enough? Because I don't know if you... You're, you're, you're part of that also. I used to believe that. Like, yes, I believe in Jesus, pero kulang pa kasi ganito yung sin ko. Eh. And gusto natin, for somehow, we want to compensate that. We want to add up to what Jesus did. How pathetic does that sound? Or, or better yet, how arrogant does that sound? that somehow by my sacrifice, I can add up to what Jesus did instead of receiving it. But when Christ offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemy should be made a footstool for his feet. The devil still lur lurks around. He's still around. Wala pa tayo dun sa timeline nun. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. So there's absolutely nothing that we can add to it. Now, does the enemy have legal ground? What do you think? Who wants, who wants their, their, their insight here? Well, I'm on right, wrong answer. We'll process it as, as a body. Uh, sorry, Andy, ko gaano mabasa na yung, yung, yung chat because I'm like, I'm really not used to like having slides. So I don't know if, if Brother Cetro can help me out. Does the enemy have legal ground? Si Jan, mas masasagot ni Jan yan. Hmm. Recitation. <laughs> ako ba? Dapat nag-off ka mo ako eh. <laughs> <laughs> Does the enemy have legal Does does he have legal ground? Ano to after? Ayo, we're talking about after the crash na po, no? Like right, right, right now, right now, as believers, ano sa palagi mo na ginyari in the spiritual realm? Yes. Yes. When and how? Why? When? Kapag kabinigyan natin ng opening si enemy, how? Um, usually, minsan ginagamit yung, yung worry natin, ganyan. Like, what, what, yung, yun nga, yung nangyari kay Pastor Macho before na, yung, yung love niya for his family na mahawa, yun yung ginawang entry point ng enemy. Which is usually talaga yun yung nangyayari. Why yung last ba? Why? When? How? Why? Yeah. Uh, yun, yung, yung, yung sa akin, ganun eh. Basta nagkaroon ng entry point kahit maliit lang yung enemy natin. In any form or in any areas of our lives, he can use it na eh against us eh. So yun yung parang nagiging legal ground niya. Nang, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon lang siya ng talagang malaking penetration if we really allowed. Doon tayo may hihirapan na to really um, resist. Kasi binigyan na natin siya ng malaking opening eh. So, yung James verse 7, if we really submitted to God, 
which is we we um yun nga, apart from him we can do nothing talaga and then once we submit yung submission kasi it's not about alright nagme-meditate naman ako nagde-devotion nagbabasa ng bible nakikinig ng bible study it's about the relationship eh we submit our our, our own lives or ourselves to him and then we resist yung resist kasi hindi yung hihintayin natin si God na dumating i-rescue tayo resist means we need to exert an extra effort talaga or force so by the time talagang which is, which level is um mas which level is parang mas nananaig sa yo is it the enemy or kasi minsan di ba pag may, may may mga times kasi na nangyayari Ah, uh, eto naniniwala tayo kay God, naniniwala tayo. Tapos biglang nagkaroon lang ng konting symptoms, mas higher na yung symptoms na nangyayari. So, kailangan ito pa rin yung ano eh, ito pa rin yung maging dominant sa atin sa our spirit. Sabi ko sinabi, sorry naman. Yeah. Okay. Two, two, two things, two things, yeah. two things, two things. One, I'm gonna pass the hosting to Jan now and she's gonna take over. <laughs> But that was amazing. I'll tell you what. Uh, sige, sige. Uh, let, let me let me share this part and then Setro add, add, add to this. But that was that was a blessing. Because one Ephesians 4, verse 27, you know this already. Do not give the enemy a foothold. And yung kanina sinasabi ninyo that we have to be mindful because there will be people, unfortunately, that will be used by the enemy to just eat our time alive. Uubusin talaga yung oras natin. I haven't, I haven't used this verse before. Never. I, I haven't got, I, I don't know, check, check with uh, Setro if he agrees with that na narinig niya sa akin. Pare, 5-5 five, five na natin to. In, in jest, masarap sabihin, masarap gawin. But, but in reality, we've never really, pare, alam mo, mayakan ng pag-asa. Si, let let your let your flesh be destroyed and and a lot of people cannot there there are some institutions that cannot explain this verse you are to deliver this man to satan for the destruction of the flesh flesh body and soul so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the lord this implies that this person can even be a believer ang tigas lang ng ulo that keeps on playing toying with sin right that that we we do have the full armor of the lord because we're supposed to stand as what see sis john said uh, this is in ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 put on the full armor of god so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes against the devil's schemes now, of course, no one's, no one's attempting, no one's trying to teach a fellow believer to be reckless. You've mentioned, we've talked about it lightly a while ago regarding to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. This is not the forum for that. I do have my sentiments on it. Right? Uh, Brother Setra, you wanted to say something. Yeah, just to add on, on uh, James chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, now, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But this is the problem. We've all been taught that God allows pain and suffering in our lives. So the moment you receive sickness, the moment you receive disease or pain or suffering, you know, even without knowing who Jesus Christ is, actually what happens is, kakakilala mo palang kay Jesus, biglang may trial ka na, biglang may ordeal ka na. And, and that's, that's the problem. They were like, like, like the people, you know, pastors, leaders are teaching us that that's to prune you, that's to strengthen you, that's to, you know, whatever you're going through, that's to give glory to God. Para lalo to me ba yung pananampalataya natin. But if pain and suffering, sickness and disease is from God, then how will you oppose it? Diba? How will we oppose what's from God? And that's what's happening now to the body of Christ. We cannot resist COVID. But we cannot resist the vaccine. We cannot resist uh, you know, pain and suffering. We absorb it. Kasi kung galing daw kay God, you know, like I was taught, kung galing kay God yan, de, lulukin mo. 
you, you need to suck it up, boy. And, and you know, just just take it like a man. They were like, like, like that's how I took it. Like I got, I just gotta suck it up and take it like a man. That's what I've been taught. So how does this verse apply to me during that time? I cannot oppose what is from God. I need to absorb it. Because if I'm going to God, yan, then I'm going to have, again, to suck it up. <laughs> I just need to, you know, Lord, if this is from you, <clears throat> diba, ko lahat to para sayo. and that's what's happening. But like, how can we oppose? How can we resist? How can we withstand sickness, pain, suffering in our lives, broken relationships? But like, like that particular ministry that the Jan sis Jan came from. But like, they, 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 they you know, they, they say something different. But like, like if your husband is doing something to you, you know, pray. For more pain, more suffering, more uh, turmoil for that particular relationship. But that's that's wrong. That's that's obviously wrong. But we were taught to do that. We were taught to just pray that prayer instead of now. You know, if 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 this particular person has financial difficulty, then Lord, let it rain on that person. Hanggang maging beggar na siya, hanggang maging taong grasa. And that's what's happening now in the body of Christ. We cannot resist what's from God. We, we end up receiving it all. But the moment we realize what's from God and what is of the devil, then that's the moment we can resist. So I just wanted to share that particular part. You know, you know what's even crazier than what you said? Is that in my notes, I kid you not, this is what's written here. You know what else is, is a law? How about the God allowed law? I was, uh, I was about to talk about that. And, and you just preempted it and I just let you rip. See, the funny thing about that is, is most, maybe, maybe for some that would view this, they'd think that like, the question and answers were all scripted. Like Jan answered that way, but like, man, that's, that's precisely what I was about to say. Like Cetro would share it like that, like that's that's precisely in my notes, and we didn't even we didn't even talk about this, man. <laughs> because because here's the thing: after we've argued against the God sending sickness to discipline us to teach us, the next line would be yes, but God allowed. And 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 this, and so what happens to this then? If God allowed that, why is he? Why did he give us authority? Why did he tell us that nothing is going to hurt us? So that mean, that kind of implies that if we are hurt, then God did that. Right? And, and it's, it's the, the verse that John, says, John said, shared, submit yourselves therefore to God. And I, I couldn't articulate it any better. It's the resisting part. Like, if the enemy cranks it up, I know what's going to be amplified in your life. Tatagalogin ko sana. Anong pumapangi, anong, ano yan? Anong, hindi. Umiibabaw. Umiibabaw is past tense, ha? Huh? Umiibabaw. Ano yung umiibabaw? Are you sure about that? That doesn't sound that smooth. <laughs> anong, anong, Okay, what's going to take over your life is not your, precisely what says John says, not your symptoms, but the presence of God in you, right? And the devil should flee because that's what God promised. And, and how can you ask for more if everything is already given? That, that's a spiritual law. I, and I don't know if, if, okay, this is a long shot, but even in the Old Testament, I think that implies as well it's like the Jacob and Esau blessing. Like, on my end, I was, I was trying to think that. Like, if I were the dad and then I mistakenly blessed one of my sons, pero dapat dito na punta, I would have just easily said, like, I, I take it back. I bless you as well. But this guy understood it. 
there are certain things in, in the spiritual realm that would look something like that. So, so what we don't want to happen is double-mindedness. Because you cannot expect to get anything from the Lord if a person is double-minded. Let him, and, and, and here's the thing. When they do this, when they speak about this, they will say that, okay, as much as I don't want to bash that word, the exegesis is wrong because this implies about wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Precisely, go ask for wisdom. Ask whether or not these afflictions are from the Lord. How's that? Let's start with that. Ask if Jesus ever ministered while he was walking on earth. Blind person goes and then Jesus goes, what's God been teaching you? What, what is my father teaching you lately? Or was there ever, uh, yeah, but you know, consequence of your sin, this and that. There's none of that. What else is double-mindedness? And, and sadly, this is, this is more, that is my wife trying to clean up my mess. This is more rampant nowadays. And this is, this is a sensitive topic. One, one of which that I never saw with the Gamboas. I didn't see this in Chris. I didn't see that they, they fought. That's why they were like, they, they were surprised. Elder son was surprised. We were expectant. I don't really know. This, these are some of those things that we will find out when we're there, when we cross that line. Because a sign of double-mindedness looks like advanced funerals or advanced wake services. And that's why I was sharing to Setra a while ago, hey, have you ever had or, or, or facilitated a wake service? Sabi niya, oh, worship lang ho. I, I did twice already. And it's really different. It's, it's, it, there's, there's, there's sadness, but there's some joy in it if the disease is without a doubt a believer, without a doubt receive the Lord. But here's the thing. We, we've witnessed that instead of coming against the work of the enemy, uh, hold on, instead of coming against the work of the enemy, they want to prepare the person's death and honor them while they're alive. Okay, don't do that on one's deathbed. You don't honor that person on their deathbed. You do that every day. You speak life to one another every day. Your friends that you haven't seen for a while, you reach out to them. How does, how does honoring look like? Exage to ng konti. Wala, si, si Kat right now, she stepped out. I tell my wife how much I love her every day. Uh, you've heard me say this. But here's the thing that you haven't heard from me. Is that pretty much sometimes every time that I see her after being separated for a few minutes inside one same house. I do that with my kids also. I'll hug them. And then they, they'd be like, I'm just here. But that's speaking life. You don't wait for a person to reach their deathbed and, oh, pare, let's, let's honor this person because like, you know, tagilid na. Pero let's pray for a miracle. Let's pray for a miracle. Ah. And then uh, there was even a, a, a story, an account on, on, on Manny's end wherein Manny had to ask permission. Can I speak in tongues? Uh, um, you know, isn't that you know, not being encouraged because no one can understand it and clearly they don't understand what tongues is about. Don't get me wrong. I, I shared that several times. I'm not the authority to speak about this subject matter. Secho is more, more, more knowledgeable about it. But I do speak and I'm not going to restrict. And in faith, I will expect that something will transpire from that. Right? Uh, Secho, you wanted to add something. Yeah, I just I just remembered a story with regard to to what we were just talking about, and uh, I'm just gonna have to men mention a preacher's name, and uh, he's he's a very controversial person. You know, the the church that he wait, he has. are you supposed to? Can you are you yeah. supposed to mention? 
maybe not mention well, it's, it's it's a story it's a story it's, it's a very significant story and maybe most of us here haven't even heard of it but uh you know um he's he's the senior pastor of Bethel and uh, his name is Bill Johnson and and I read it in his book uh, God is good and w- this book when when I read it you know like uh, this is uh, he had a story about his dad and you know uh his dad was a worshiper and he, they were experiencing revival in their church even before his you know the church the Bethel church but he was experiencing healing he was experiencing uh you know all of this and and uh uh they were praying for cancer and cancer was being healed left and right but all of a against sudden his cancer. dad Let's rephrase it against praying yeah. against yeah the, the, you know praying against cancer and and people were getting healed and then he heard that his dad ha, you know had cancer and they thought it was just going to be easy you know but but just to keep the long story short what happened was the dad did not get he- well the da- the dad did not recover and they couldn't accept it because they were getting this revelation of god is good god is so good that that he he does not allow pain and suffering to happen that's why he's being criticized so much because of his radical you know ways but 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 well, you know what they decided to do the whole family decided that they're going to stand on the word that god is good that he does not allow pain and suffering and you know what what they did instead of a uh, mourning they offered his their his dad as a sacrifice as an offering to the lord because he was being eaten up by cancer and instead of you know they stood on the word that god is good and they offered up his dad as a sacrifice of praise and they were praising the lord there there's so much details that i'm missing out but that's how battle right now you know where where does most of the worship music that we listen to come from it's coming from that side of the planet it's coming from that side of the world and it's because of one man who stood by the word and who wanted to trust in god's goodness and 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 you know uh he would say that his dad had a mantle of worship and that's what they carry now they have a mantle of worship you know all throughout you know their ministry and they're sharing it all across the world you know in the philippines in japan in zimbabwe in iran you know in, in all parts of the world and if you know like i i don't know how they did that but that's just in itself supernatural and i guess that's one act of faith that we can express you know like speaking in tongues is one of them diba if you guys haven't spoken in tongues that's how we act diba we act in faith by speaking your heavenly language that's your act of faith that's our act of faith small steps and we're going to get to even larger steps of faith that's what i'm believing for okay thanks for that so so um to 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 add to what what brother setro was also saying um one you know that that particular is it church ministry is is being attacked by the conservatives i'm not here to defend nor am i here to attack i'm i'm here to i guess somewhat gently rebuke the ones who attack we're we're still a body of christ and and as and did the does he preach a different jesus and to my knowledge no and and i i kid you not such a you don't know about this that i i've been asked once that precisely that person like i heard that that nick coded coded i'll say his name uh pastor J- bill johnson like to my knowledge i don't quote people that much i quote scripture a lot uh you can go back to my to 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 all the recordings 
I don't, I'm not good with quoting people. Uh, I hate quoting people. I quote myself. I, I say crazy things. I, I don't need to quote other people. <laughs> anyway, uh, go, going, back, going back here would be this. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Okay, so he absolutely, absolutely, absolutely paid for everything. And, and Matthew, Matthew 5 verse 17 does say that, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. He fulfilled it already. Where am I leading with this? Because there, there will be some teachings other than the, you know, you have the, the God allowed teaching, you have the advanced funerals for, for some in honor of this and that. There's also some that, that do not realize that they're putting too much laws in place, that you have to do this, that you have to do that. No one's saying that, be lazy. And, and we've, I've, I've witnessed a few. I've witnessed believers in Christ. Yes, having a revelation of God doesn't send sickness, but at the same time, slightly became slothful because, I don't know, I, I also don't know whether, whether or not you know, the, the messages that that person listens to just prevents them from, from moving or what. Having too much loss, there's, there's danger to that. And we've seen this happen here. Bawal to, bawal ganyan, you know, put this, put that, you have to do this. Having too much loss, you might say that you, you're, you're one, is, one nation is borderlining on total uh, communism na lang, para mas mabili sabihin. If you feel like you, you lack freedom with, with all these rules, all these mandates, guess what? You know what? We have freedom in Christ. Because what happens the first time after we receive, if a brother or sister in Christ witness to us, you know, a believer shares his or her faith to a non-believer. After the person accepts it, all of a sudden, programs come in. Programs come in. That, oh, we do this here. Oh, this is our teaching here. Oh, there's membership and whatnot and under here and up here and sideways. I don't know. Why place such a big burden? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Who do you think this line was being addressed? With the Gentiles? To the ones that do not understand that their salvation has been paid for? Right? Bakit biglang nagkakaroon ng, ng, ng programs? Bakit biglang nagkakaroon ng gauge of, I'll, I'll label it this way, holiness? Heck, I was asked once, your holiness metric from a scale of 1 to 10, 1 to 10, I did that. I, I was there. I was part of a group that, that, that did that. Because we, we, how did we receive Christ in faith? How did the Galatians, uh, how, how, how did uh, Paul address this to the Galatians? Sino gusto magbasa dyan? Jess, ikaw naman. Or Ming. Yeah, go Ming. Go. Ming instead. Okay. Galatians 3, 1 to 6. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed, if indeed it was in vain, 
Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracle among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness? Thank you, Ming. Ming. You know what else? While she was reading that, I don't know if this is a revelation. Listen to this. Are you having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Does not merely imply your works in the flesh. You've heard this. God is perfecting you through this sickness. Can sickness affect your spirit? Who among here, when they're sick, gets a virus, a bacteria, that their spirit is also wounded, that their spirit also has a flu, or one spirit has cancer? And why is it that people teach that you are being perfected by that? That scripture here. That's not my, my analytic, that's not my, my, my profound revelation that, you know, it's not a quotable quote that Nick has just recently said. It's scripture. Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Saan ba tayo tinatamahan pag nagkakasakit tayo? Flesh eh. Don't tell me one spirit also dies because we already have eternal life when you receive it. Your spirit's not supposed to die. So this verse and, alone, and, go. Yeah. And, you know, like, uh, we don't need hermeneutics. We don't need uh, uh, a degree for us to understand this verse, right? And like a, a four-year-old, when you read this, can understand this. If that four-year-old is already reading, they were like, we don't need uh, uh, a theologian to, for us to understand this. They were, that's why not my question mark. Eh. Paul is asking you, asking us. They were, we, we don't need uh, you know, uh, ba- a Bible degree to understand this. It's, sim- it's as, as you read it, that's what it is. They were, like, it's as we, we read it plainly. Plainly. Clear as day, man. Okay. For the record, Cetra and I are not against further learnings. You know, we respect the leaders. We respect theological degrees. They put up their time. They deserve to be called doctors. But when the theological degree goes against God just plainly being good, God is good, enemy bad. If it goes up against that, and if you... If you try to put burdens on people, I'm willing to challenge their degrees. Okay? So I, I, I get the whole, hey, we've, we've preached too much about grace. Be careful. Maybe, maybe if it's a big institution, they'll, they'll quickly warn, label, preempt even. Because some believers may take it as licentiousness. You've heard that before. Diba? Oh, baka, baka license to sin na to. License to sin na to. When does, the, does that person read their Bible? Do they understand the heart of God? For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? What, that is, what does it say on scripture? Certainly not. A person who constantly sins and, and say, no, grace, 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 clearly, huge, huge chance this person doesn't understand the gospel. I'll, I'll call it out that way. No one saying, go sin. Scripture says, Yes, you know, you're not under the law, but by grace. Yet what does scripture say? Sin not. After Jesus ministered, what did he say? Stop, stop sinning. Does that mean that when we sin, we're condemned, we're doomed? No. Because Jesus paid for what? Sin. Past? Yes? Present? 
Yes. Future. Yes. Heck, I'm 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 even I'm even one to challenge something about your last sin being suicide. I don't want to put that to the test, but I know my answer to it. My answer is simply this. Is a person a believer? Yes? What's suicide? Is there a greater sin? Is there such a thing as greater sin? No. It it's it sound extreme. One that I'm not gonna put to the test, but I know where, where I stand with that. So, okay, this is the more sensitive part. Not sure, should I stop? Okay. How about the law if you can't use that? Be careful, you can't, you can't use that verse. When you minister to people, don't use that verse. We've heard that. It's been shared, which is why I had to leave because I believe in the verse, the, the, the fine print down there. It's Hebrews 13, verse 17. It says, Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Okay, you guys give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. And I want them to be happy. What about the, the law of you can't use that? Because Setro a while ago mentioned hermeneutics uh, mentioned exegesis and you can you can uh, use hermeneutics as well because there are some that use these verses you guys are familiar with these verses right favorite verses ng, ng, ng some some people jeremiah 20 29 verse 11 to, to 12 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you not harm you plans to give you hope in a future then you will call on me and come and pray, me, uh, pray to me and I will listen to you. And it's like, wow, uh, I, I love this verse. And then, uh, sorry. Okay. Mr. Hermeneutics guy would say, no, oh, but this promise, this, 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 this one here, you can't use that. Like, well, why not? Because they're trying to justify brokenness. Because they're trying to justify either poverty or sickness or death. You can't use that. Like what? Because the exegesis of that, this, this is promise only applies to the Jews. It's a promise to Israel. And if you read it, yeah, you can't. You, you can, your mind's going to swing that way. Your mind's going to go, oh, I know. This was during their time and this and that. About this verse, my favorite verse. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. In the Osana Edito, it's a version of the, why did I write that? Okay. Truly has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Mas kabisado ko pa than, than reading here. Sorry. Yeah, what translation is this? I have no idea. I just cut and paste from the internet because I wanted to write <laughs> Isaiah 53 verse uh, 5. Truly has borne our griefs but ca uh, carried our sorrows, yet we have seen him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, the chastisement, Far peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Right? And they will go, no, this implies spiritual healing. And then and, and there's a paper about it. Okay, I'm not going to target that part. And maybe exegesis can easily say, yeah, but Matthew 8 verse 16 fulfilled already. But I go, what about the Peter 2.24 one? That it says that you were healed. Oh, no, 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 no. And then whatever. But don't use this. Uh, don't use that. So I call it a law. Is there a law? The don't use it law. Because, because last I checked, who wants to read this? I'll do it. Just one line long. Romans 10, 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Maybe they're going to say, though, that doesn't imply to the promises. To my knowledge, all of the promises are answered with yes and in Christ, amens also. So I don't know what they're, what they're really implying or what that statement really implies. Is that my last one? No, I'm not. Okay. 
So, yeah. so here's, here's also another one. Here's another one in the Old Testament since I've established, hey, Greek, um, which is us, we're Gentiles and Jews. Proverbs 18.21. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not here. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it enjoy its fruits. And I want to be as cautious as this, as sobrang praning ko, and I don't mean this in a legalistic way. And I've seen my, my old self manifest in one of my kids because, you know, distant learning, so they're always in there. I know. And one of my kids, she plays um, Roblox. Um, I'm not promoting the game. But I will, I will hear her say, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead already. And she plays it often. Picture that she keeps saying, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. I go, okay. Um, so, so I'm like, I saw my old self playing that intensely, although wala, walang sinabi naman yung, yung daughter, but I don't think she's, she's that nuts. Um, yet I believe in this verse, I believe that we speak life or death. And yes, that's not, that doesn't imply that she's cursing, cursing herself. Obviously, it's a game. But I still fine-tuned it. I said, I know that you're dead there in a the game. I'm referring to the game. This is what, you know, she, she quickly um, um, defended the phrase. I go, instead of that, just say, I'm down. Because gamers don't die. They revive they respond go and i'm saying that right so i go say i'm down okay now everything that we that we that we do you know there are natural laws there are spiritual laws and we've established that god is no respecter of persons so when does Manifesting miracles, manifesting healing, prosperity begin versus the ones that from the exterior at least, because we, we, we can't determine these things. From the outside, we see that, hey, they are praying in faith. They pray the same way. Seems like that. How come wala? I can't quite answer that, to be honest with you. But I know that God's not the one hindering it. In, in John 15 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I just know that. I just know that if it's taking time, there's a huge chance that there might be an aspect or not a huge chance. There's a chance that I'm not abiding in him. I am humble enough to admit that I don't always walk by the Spirit. Obviously. Kitang-kita naman, isura ko pa lang, mukha na akong, you know, cursed, but, you know. So, uh, last few verses would be Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Do you, do you believe? Do you, do you, have, do you have faith in the Lord? Um, Romans 3 verse 28 For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Everything is by faith. There are spiritual laws. There are natural laws. You want to use the law, you better make sure that you don't stumble, you don't sin in one of them. How do you use God's laws? Believing what he says. For man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word of God. It's, it's not enough to to it's it, okay 
shortcut would look something like this. And I, I've done this. I've done this. You've done. I, I'll accuse you guys of doing this as well. Example: If you're if you're down or if you're if you're praying for healing, you go, bro. Can you send me verses on healing? Or you will Google verses on healing yourself, and you will meditate on them, and you will focus on them. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But once a person gets healed already, what happens next? Do you John 15, 5, do you abide in him and expect the fruits to happen? Because that is, that is a spiritual law. Do you stay healthy and fit? Because that's also a natural law. You can't abuse your, your, yourself. You cannot stress yourself because stress also takes a toll on your body. So do you lift up your burdens? Do you believe that his yoke is light? His burden is light? Or do you burden yourself with ministry? Ako, I'm, I'm in a state right now. I, to be honest with you, I'm also zoomed out. Zoomed out as in this is my first, fifth Zoom meeting. It, it, it's rare, so, so it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm complaining or anything like that. But I've, this is my fifth one for the day. And I thought like my old gamer self would kick in and I'd actually enjoy like being in front of a screen. But it, it's like, it also like, hey, it takes a toll in your, in your mind because my brain's like, like 120 miles an hour type. Um, well, but yeah. Let me, let me just share a little bit. Uh, and uh, uh, just to give a, a, a recap, you know, I, I know you're not done yet, bro. But uh, just to give you, just to focus also on, on our subject, but the proper use of God's law. Guys, what, 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 what is the law for? Can anyone answer this? What is the law for? What was the, the Ten Commandments for? What was the 613 laws of Moses for? To point us to Jesus. That we That's need a Savior. Yes, that's that's exactly what it is. But it's 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 the the a type and a shadow of the of of Jesus. The law was a type and a shadow of Jesus because we needed perfection. We cannot attain the law. But by doing things, you try, you try, you try. The Jews have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, but they've always failed. No one has been able to keep up with the law. But this is where we are. It is law versus grace. The, the use of the law was, what was, the purpose of the law was used to condemn you. Was to condemn you that you're a useless sinner. That you'll never be able to attain perfection. That you won't be able to meet my standards. That's what God is saying with the law that we cannot meet his standard. And that's why it was a type and a shadow of Christ to come. He was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So now we are under grace. So guys, what has grace provided? Guys, we've been taught, we've been taught in our circles one thing that grace has provided. And it's always been focused on salvation. That's it. But what else has, has grace provided you? For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift so that no one can boast about it. So what's God's gift? Is it salvation only? Is it just forgiveness of sins? Grace is so much more. There's so much more. That's why I'm going to have to point this out. You know, like automatically, if grace is more than salvation and forgiveness, they call it hyper grace because they can't understand that type of grace that gives you healing, that gives you deliverance, that gives you freedom, that breaks bondages away from you, that helps you see the difference between the spirit and the flesh. But what's, what else has grace provided? That we are now His righteousness. Right? Like, like the moment I got a revelation 
of the righteousness of God. And it has been provided for, by grace that I cannot attain it by my own self. I cannot say things. I cannot think things. I cannot do things to attain all of this. That's who I am in Jesus Christ. It has been provided by grace. So now, what do we do? People still go back to the law. I don't understand why. Why, why would you want to go back to Second Chronicles 4 but to ask for, for, for prayer from God when He has already provided you? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Right, like what we already have grace, salvation, forgiveness, and then why go back to the law? No, we don't go back to the law because the purpose of the law is to condemn you that you are imperfect, that you you will always fail, that you will always just to put it plainly, palpak, di ba palpaka, parate kang papalpak, di ba? And and it says in Galatians chapter three verse ten, brother Nick already pointed this out. Before all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. You I see, mean, I, the you, you see how I, 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 I went to the verse right away because I knew you were going to get there. <laughs> go on, go Amen, ahead. Bro. And, and uh, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Guys, this is what's happening. We have grace. Then we're going back to the law. What does the law attain? The hey, law wanna, has curse. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna address something with you, just because Kat's like beside me and she has her own uh, gadget, and I can hear myself, which is like an annoying voice. I don't like hearing myself like that. <laughs> okay, uh, we we've we've encountered a few, and I think. That, wait, wait, someone said that. I think it was Sis Lin, was it? Yeah, Lin. I thought I can perfect the Ten Commandments when I was in high school. I was avoiding sin. Okay, that, that's a very good point because we've, I've heard this before. Bro, is it sin if you, and, and then insert whatever. And a lot of people are just attempting to dodge sin as if, you know, like you can dodge enough and not fall into sin. And don't get me wrong, yung kaninang inexplain ni, ni Sis Jan, that was spot on. The reason why we try to avoid is not much the condemnation part. We just don't want to give the enemy any room. Right? We know that, that our faith, our belief, can destroy strongholds. That we have to keep each and every thought what captive to the obedience of Christ. So we, we want that, not because, hey, God's going to discipline, punish us. Man, just the sheer act of sinning alone and slipping away from God, not abiding by Him, already has its own repercussions. If, if one truly has the understanding of the prodigal son, what was supplied to the, to the kid? To the, not kid, obviously he's an adult already. But what was supplied to that, that son, that guy? The answer to that was everything. Son chose to leave. Free will took place. Father didn't just stop him for one by asking. I'm going to use this as material also in, um, in live ministries. By asking for your inheritance in a Middle Eastern culture implies that you want your dad dead. That alone is already a slap in the face towards the father. And yet the father's like, in a way, parang Ephesians 1 verse 3 took place. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, simplicity in Christ. And, and this, is, this is my take on how to use proper use of God's law. So there, I'm, I'm done. If there are any questions, let me know. And, you know, just to, just to add on that, guys, like if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, but you'll see there the curses and the blessings first. I think it's 16 blessings and then curses is 70 plus, 70 plus curses. 
that without knowing it, we're born again Christians. And most born again Christians are still under the law. It might not be thou shall not do this, thou shall not do that. But it's coming up with our own laws. But like like uh, when I was growing up, my dad had had his own law of his house. Like, like he had his own law. If you didn't obey his law, you'd get a spanking. But like we come, we're so used to coming up with our own laws. But like for example, by choosing your husband, by choosing your wife, or you know, by by with your children. But you you cre we create laws for our children. But like without knowing it, like if I don't read my Bible daily, I'm gonna get a whooping. You know, I'm I'm gonna get uh, so, something something bad's going to happen. I'll give you one. I'll give you one because the, the this is an argument. I'm trying to equip the saints also here. Uh, the argument of pare, bakit yung mga yung mga tao they they haven't heard about God, they haven't heard about Jesus. You mean when they die, ganyan, 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 and then they go to hell and whatever, right? One, I did not make up that law. Two, no matter how a person would attempt to say that he or she is an atheist, you've heard this, like oh atheist and yon and will 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 come up with all sorts of explanation as to why a god or god doesn't exist romans 2 verse 14 to 15 and i'm reading from my bible already for when gentiles who do not have the law gentiles meaning non-jew do not have the law by nature do what the law requires they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. Verse 15, they show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. Right? Did you pick that? Right? Gentiles. Voila. No, no, no knowledge. But you have a hint of this. Like by default, if you did something wrong prior to hardening one, one, one person's hardening of their hearts, it's it's there. You you you'll feel something that hmm, this is there's there's something wrong here. Romans one verse twenty. Like I said, you wanna you wanna talk about the law? Romans, Galatians, they're full of them. Uh, and and. We don't have enough time for me to cover everything. So it's like highlighted verses already. Romans 1 verse 20 says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so they are without excuse. Sorry, without excuse. And we've seen this, and, and and the argument for hey, what about the 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 people that are are in some like ancient tribe and whatnot, Amazonian, whatever? What do they do? Don't they have a quote unquote god? Right? They will sacrifice. They will do this. They will offer. You know this, right? The, these are like modern day discovery that they will see that oh, these times these ancient whatever, whatever, they used to worship this way. Or they used to believe in a quote-unquote God like that. What's sad is unbelievers will label Christianity as something that um, colonizers used to oppress. Like, have you read the Bible? Does it seem like it's oppression to you? And they will account for, oh, but the Hispanics use Christianity to like this and that, the Philippines. and like, Okay, that's not the Bible also. So, there. No, oh, internet. Well, I, I just wanted to pinpoint the one, one uh, curse in Deuteronomy 28, guys. There's so many curses here. And you know what? This is one curse. If you're under the law, you're, you're under one curse. There's so many other curses. And this is in verse 61. 
It says here, also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. Guess what, guys? Where are we? Are we still under the law? Is God still sending, is, is God still bringing upon you curses until you are destroyed? Because that's what people will justify this verse for. It says here in Deuteronomy 28, you're under a curse. But that's what grace has done. You know what? God has redeemed us from this curse. Galatians chapter 3, verse 15. Or was it 13, I think? So, uh, like every sickness and every plague, COVID, by grace, we have been redeemed from this curse. If you read every curse in this chapter, by grace, we have been redeemed. And God has already sent his one and only son. Siguro it says there that God will, the, the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. That was for, and, and one more insight, guys. Who was the law made for? Was it made for the Gentiles? No, it wasn't made for us. It was made for the Jews, for the Hebrew people, the Israelites. The law was not made for us. It does not belong to you. So tama na, huwag mo na ang kinin yung law. Hindi na, hindi na sa'yo yung kautusan na yan. Di ba, huwag mo na sundin yung kautusan na yan. Dalawa nga lang yung kautusan eh. Sabi ni Jesus, di ba? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mind, and strength. And what's next is to love each other just as you love yourself. Just as Christ loved you and gave himself up for, the, for, for us, for the church. So there, that's where we are. We are in, under grace, guys. Let's, let's stop going back to the law. Let's stop going back to rules, making up our own, you know, ordinances like what's happening right now. But let's 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 look for grace. Let's be graceful. Let's let's start to love each other. Let's be more gracious to each other. Let's start to love God even more. And I, I think it's safe to say also, bro, that I don't know. I, I look at I look at the ones who are part of this this call right now. Everyone understands this. That's the beauty about it. This this message also, you know, it's it's something that we can go back to. Pwede natin tong i, i, i share probably preferably if you ask me, I prefer that you guys share it personally rather than the the shortcut would be I I, I do that sometimes. I go, "Hey, watch this." If you have any questions, then then we'll ask. Because otherwise, it'll be like one one on one on each and every person. Ubusang oras ko nyan, right? And it's it's humanly impossible also for us to minister that way, right? Um, I'm gonna close us in prayer. If there are any questions, so I can like pretty much bounce off as well. Like I said, like. I'm a bit on the tired side. It just doesn't appear so much in sa uh, So I'll, I'll, I'll pray. If there are any questions afterwards, we can, we can continue also. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to give you thanks, Lord. We know that Christ has redeemed us from the law. No, we can't even, we can't even possibly not commit sin. We really do need a savior. We thank you for uh, what you said in Titus 3.5. It says that he saved us not by the righteous deeds we had done, but according to his mercy through the washing of new birth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you. You are here with us right now. You are who gives life to our mortal bodies. You are the teacher 
that would instruct us and remind us all the things that Jesus has said. You are the power that comes with the word as well. And Father, we also want to give a special blessing for our brother Cetro, who's going to celebrate his birthday this coming Saturday. May you use him mightily, Lord. We pray protection for him and his family, provisions also. He will have favor, wisdom, and the gift of tongue to speak Japanese because he's currently there in Japan. I speak blessings upon blessings to each and everyone here and even the ones who will be hearing the recording of this. That there is no more condemnation in Christ because Christ has already redeemed us. And that there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. So therefore, we get to claim all, all, their, all their blessings as well. Because it says in Romans 10 verse 12, all his riches are given to all those who call on him. And we call on you, Lord. We, we believe that Jesus is the name above all names to which you were given already. That we are not going to fall back after receiving and walking by the Spirit that we are going to attempt, Lord, to operate in the flesh because no one gets perfected by the flesh according to Galatians uh, 3. We just, we just thank you, Lord, for this revelation also. And we pray that in, in our time of trial when we are being tempted, that we will not be double-minded with our prayers, that we will remember that authority has already been given to us to trample against the work of the enemy and their works shall not prosper and it shall not hurt us. So Father, we thank you once again. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your finished work. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you right now. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.